In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your calculator a little bit more efficiently and also look at the exam questions where you're asked to use a calculator and round your answers. So here's the calculator that we recommend that you use at school. Now I'm just going to go over a couple of the buttons that are involved in uh, these using a calculator questions appearing on the calculator paper. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of them. So firstly, I'm going to start above the top right here with this squared button. OK, so if you want to square a number, if you remember it, which is uh, times a number by itself, you push this little button here with the X and the little two on it. Uh, likewise, if you want to cube a number, you've got to push this button, which is the X with the little cubed symbol on it. Um, if you want to do any powers higher than that, so something to the power of 4, power of 5, you need to push this button here. So again, you've got that X symbol, but instead of a number here, you've got a little box. Another very useful button here is this fraction button. Now, uh, one of the reasons why we uh, really like these calculators in school is because they let you do fractions on them and uh, display them really nicely like we've got up the top here. So this is the button you need to use for that. Uh, square rooting, the opposite of squaring here is the button here. And lastly, we've got these trigonometry buttons that you would have come across if you've done trigonometry in maths before. Now, before we move on, I'm just going to point out two more very important buttons here. Now, the first is this SD button. Now, when it comes to uh, questions on your calculator paper where you're asked to use a calculator, most of your answers they want you to give as decimals. Now, this calculator is very powerful. We already said that it does sums in fractions and gives answers as fractions too. And also, it uses uh, these square roots and can give its answers in square root form as well, which we call third form. Now, both of which are great for high level maths, but when it comes to GCSE, we want our decimal answers. So, if you ever have anything that looks like this up here that's not a decimal, make sure you push that SD button um, at least once, sometimes twice, to get the full decimal on display here. Now, the second is this little wheel here, this blue wheel. Now, what you can do is you can use this to go into your sum and move around. So if you want to make any changes, OK, you can use this wheel to go in. In some functions, for example, when you're using the fraction button here, you need to use this wheel to go from the top of the fraction, the numerator, down to the bottom. So pushing the bottom part there would get you down to the bottom of your fraction. Now, finally, before we have a little look at some examples, I'm going to show you a couple more functions here, which you can only obtain by pushing this shift button. Now, this shift button works like a caps lock on a keyboard. You just need to push it once, and then a little S appears at the top here, and then all of these gold functions become available to you. Now, I've already mentioned this square root button here. Now, if you push shift, then push this button, you get the cube root. And likewise, if we were to push shift then this any power button here, we would get any root. So we can do higher, higher root powers like the fourth root, the fifth root uh, here. Lastly, we've got these other functions here, the inverse trig functions. OK, so uh, again, if you've done trigonometry in your um, in your maths classes, you would know that we need these to calculate angles using trigonometry. And again, you get these by pushing shift, then either the cos sign or tan buttons. OK, so I think the best way of learning how to uh, use any piece of technology is just to play around with it. So all I've got here is a couple of sums for you to do on your calculator. Now, your goal is to try and get this exact sum here written exactly as it looks like there up in your display up here. Now, you'll notice that there is a couple of sums, but really it looks like a fraction. So we're going to be using this fraction button. Now, for the second question here, you'll notice we have a square root, so we're going to have to use this square root button. So again, pause the video, use your calculator, and get your answers uh, for these two sums. OK, so hopefully you've had a go at that, and you've got two answers, uh, writing all the figures of your calculator's display. So the first answer you should have got was this a 3.047, uh, et cetera, et cetera, making sure that you've written the entire thing. Now, if you didn't get that value, then what I've got here are the buttons that you needed to have pushed in the correct order. So have a go at uh, pushing these buttons and see if you can get the answer out. OK, 
Okay, so for this question down the bottom here, you should have got uh, this as your answer. And again, if you didn't quite get that one, then here are the buttons and the order in which you needed to push them. Okay, so here are two slightly harder questions for you to have a go at. Again, the first question is going to involve this uh, fraction button here, but also you've got powers there, so you're going to have to use this power button. For the question down the bottom, you're going to have to do the any root button. So remember, you've got to push shift and then this power button to get any root out. And then also you're going to be squaring in there, so you're going to have to use that squared button as well. So again, remember, your goal is to try and get exactly those uh, calculations written up exactly as they look there on your calculator. So pause the video, have a go at those. Okay, so again, hopefully you've had a go at those. If you uh, did the first one, uh, the entire uh, calculator display should have looked a little bit like that. And the second one should have looked a little bit like that. Again, if you got either of those incorrect, okay, then uh, here are the buttons that you needed to push for the first one and the buttons you needed to push for the second one. In these next two questions, you'll see that they're both uh, involving the fraction button and the square root button. But in this case, be really, really careful to make sure which you do first. Again, remember that uh, rule. Try and make sure that the calculation you see on the page here comes up exactly as you see it on the calculator. So again, pause the video, see if you can answer the question, and then we'll run through the answers in a moment. Okay, so the answer to the first one you should have got was this, and the answer for the second one you should have got was that. Okay, so if you didn't get either of those, again, here are the instructions to get the first answer, and here are the instructions to get the second one. These next two questions, we're going to be practicing using these trig buttons here. So in the first question, we're going to be using those plus the square root. In the second question, we're going to be using the inverse trig function. So remember that shift and using these buttons after that. And we're also going to be putting a fraction in as well. OK, so pause the video again and then we'll go through the answers in a moment. OK, so again, if you got the answers correctly for the first one, you would have got a number like this. And the second one, you would have got this number here. Again, if you didn't get these right, then here are the instructions to do the first one. And here are the instructions to do the second one. Notice that when you do use these buttons, it starts off with a bracket and you've got to make sure to close that bracket in the right place. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. Okay, so hopefully now you're using your calculator a little bit more efficiently and know a little bit more about what the different buttons do. Now, on your exam, you'll be given a calculation to do on your calculator. And the second question usually they ask then is to round your answer. So here I've got three different types of rounding that we could do. Now, the first one here is where I need to round my answer to one decimal place. So here what I need to do is I need to identify the number in the first decimal column, which is this four. Now I'm going to round this number, which means cut this number off at four. Now, if you remember your rounding rules, I need to look at the number after the four, which is that six. And if that is five or bigger then that four rounds up. So this would be 28.5. Okay, so in this next example here, I want to round this answer to three significant figures. Now, significant figures usually I need to do is just count from the very first number that I come to. But you've got to watch out with significant figures when you've got decimal answers like this one here. I ignore all of the zeros at the front of the number here. So we actually assume that this seven is the first significant figure because it's the first number that's not zero. So I go seven, five and nine is my third significant figure. So again, I'm going to cut my number off here. I need to do my rounding rule. So look at the number next to the nine, which is a six. Five or bigger makes that number up, go up. So I get 0 0.0760. Notice the nine rounds up to 10, which then means that that five has to go up by one, two. Now in this last question, I'm asked to round my answer to an appropriate degree of accuracy. Now this means one of two things. Either 
I'm going to round it to two decimal places, or I'm going to round it to three significant figures, whichever I think will give me the smaller and better answer. So remember, an appropriate degree of accuracy is either two decimal places or three significant figures, depending on what type of number I've got. Now, this here is quite a big number. So as I've got a big number here in the thousands, I'm going to use three significant figures. If it was a decimal number or a small number, then I'd use two decimal places. But three significant figures, counting from the left, I've got three, four, and eight as the third significant figure. Okay, that's where I'm going to cut my number off. Look at the number next to it, which again is bigger than five. So that means that eight is going to go up. So I get nine. And I've got to remember to put a zero on because my number is in the thousands. So I need to make sure that my rounded number is still in the thousands. Okay, so here's three for you to have a go at. Again, pause the video and then I'll run through the answers in a moment. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. So uh, my very first one, I want to round to one significant figure. So that's just my very first number here, one. That's where I'm cutting it off. And I'm going to look at the number next to the one, which is less than five. So my one stays the same, but all the numbers after that that are not decimals turn to zeros. So I get 10,000 here. My next one, I want to round to four decimal places. So I'm counting all of my decimal numbers. Two, three, four, nine is my first um, it's my fourth decimal number. So that's where I'm cutting it off. Look at the number next to the nine, which is, is bigger than five. So I get 2.23. And my nine's going to round up to 10, which means that my five is going to go up as well. So I get 2.2360. Lastly, I'm asked to round my answer to an appropriate degree of accuracy. And in this case, I've got quite a small number. So I'm going to do two decimal places. So here, two decimal places means I'm going to be rounding that three. Okay, putting my line down here, checking the number next to it, which is five. So it's bigger than five, five it's five or bigger. So I get 5.24. And if you notice in that last example here, it's also uh, rounded to three significant figures as well. Okay, so hopefully that's helped you to learn to use your calculator a little bit more efficiently and also how to round your answers. Now, rounding your answers is probably one of the most important skills when it comes to calculator papers, because although it's not actually assessed on its own, you'll find that, especially on the higher paper, nearly all your answers, all the questions are asking you to round your numbers to a certain degree of accuracy. So if you don't know how to round before your calculator paper, you'll probably find that you're going to miss a lot of uh, easy marks at the end. Okay, so practice loads of exam questions on this and good luck!